Are you gonna end up breaking this shovel? Oh yeah, this shovel ain't gonna make it for sure. A handsome, good looking guy said that we should do that for a while and I remember that yeah that fella got a little bit of pushback. I never make a mistake. Any mistake that ever happens to befall me is the universe thrusting, you know, bad things on me. What's up guys? Welcome back. We got a lot of work this week, but first things we got to do is we have to go back to our old project and finish it off. If you guys remember, we made a really awesome pavilion with a really cool deck, but we never finished the deck because we needed to stain and seal it. But Home Depot didn't have our product, so we kind of put it off. We're back, we have the product, and then we're gonna be getting into, back into our solar battery project that we started last week. Yeah, the infrastructure for the solar. Things don't go in a straight line, you know, when you do everything, just the two of us. Yeah, ain't no, ain't no crew out Mainly here. Mainly him. Ain't no, yeah, ain't no editing crew. Ain't, you'll never see 20, 20 dudes crawling all over any structure that I'm building. So we're out here on our own. You know, we're trying to build this and we got a lot of, we got a lot of work to do because you know first things first we got to protect our sweet trailer All right, so as y'all know, we live in a trailer. We're trailer sailors, and the deck doesn't have much of a gap between you know the wood and the trailer. And we're going to try to save time instead of hand sanding this entire deck and trying to get into the grooves. We're just going to use the sprayer. The sprayer's been working well for us, so we have to protect the trailer with this paper. It should be pretty straightforward. Just going to roll it out and put it between that gap, and then we should be able to rip it with the sprayer and knock this whole job out in an hour or so. But I was telling Kristen. We shouldn't even put this paper up and we should just use that brown stain to paint oh my gosh. to paint the trailer too because then everything would blend up cohesively. I hate these, you know, these Lightning McQueen stickers. It, it, it drives me crazy. So I've been, so let me know in the comments below, guys, settle it once and for all for our marital bliss. Should we paint the trailer or should we just leave the stickers on Stain it, it poo brown? I don't think stain so. Stain it poo brown. Right, guys the paper's on did we argue a little yeah we did but you know what we got through it now the paper's on tight I think all then we have to do now is get the product fill up the sprayer and let loose okay so I'm using this tape here because I've never been a good bucket pourer never Ever. I'll pour half of this bucket just out on this paper if I don't try something new. So people act like you can put this tape on here and it helps with the drips that go down the bucket and it helps you, you know, just overall do the right thing. So I'm trying it. I don't what know what are we right. using here today? We're using some chocolate doodle brown. That's not what it's called. It is called doodle brown. It's called semi-transparent waterproof stain and sealer. So it's not just stain, it's sealer. Same stuff we used on the fence that's been Well, I hate to break well. it to you, but doodle brown is semi-transparent too. <laughs> We've all been there. Okay, that's enough out of you today. Okay, that worked pretty well. It wasn't an A++, but I'll give it a solid B+. A few drips came out, but very manageable. Sometimes and you drop it on this smoke too, so you should concentrate. Nah. Yes, nah, you have. Nah, I never dropped it. Yes, nah, I never have. dropped it. You thought you twisted on one time, and then you dropped the whole basket. Listen, I'm an American man. <laughs> I never make a mistake. Any mistake that ever happens to befall me is the universe thrusting, you know, bad things on me. It's never my own mistakes. That's just how life works. So we're ready, everything's cleaned up, and we're ready to rip it. Time to spray.
Okay, so I got the top done. It's looking pretty good. As you can see, the cats are walking on it. That was an issue. That's something we kind of saw coming. Um, they don't like it when it's spraying. The noise kind of scares them away. But when you stop, they want to jump on it. So a part of the process that I didn't really know was that once you spray it, you got to take about a 10, 15 minute uh, play with the cats off in the field with a stick break to, to keep your, your everything looking good. So now that the top is done primarily, I'm going to do the front. Um, I only have one gallon left. I use a whole gallon to do that. So I'm hoping I have enough because I want to do another coat on the top as well. So hopefully this makes it. I have to really feather that Wagner painter because the cheap one that we bought, it doesn't, it's not very adjustable. So you kind of got to manually just barely let it out, but it's going okay. And we got to get this done before the sun goes down. It's the next day. The deck looks awesome. I love the way it looked. At first I was questioning it. It seemed kind of wet. It didn't look like it was drying properly, but now it's dry and the stairs, the front, the whole wraparound, it all looks great. Makes a big difference. It's just deck. It's just stain. You know, we're learning how to build and learn how to let things go. So, you know, the cats did jump on it at one point and left a few footprints, but I said, you know what? That's just something I can be a crying sad boy for when they finally you know move on to the next phase of existence in life i'll look at that little cat stain print and go oh that was that was bitty that day he was my best friend but you know it'll still be fun adds character does everything will need to be perfect out here so we got that going good we're it, moving on now yeah now we're on that was a pretty easy light duty project this next one's going to be not as easy but it's got to get done nonetheless the faster we get it done the better our lives will be so let's jump into it doesn't sound the best. Okay, so we're getting ready to form, we're getting ready to place where our solar array and our battery bank is going to go um, that is south that is east directly behind me so everybody says you want to face them south um, so i'm saying that's probably right watching the sun go across here in this area that's basically what i think is southerly is going to get the most amount of sun throughout the day as you can see it's beaming down on me right now so right here is a good flat spot this is centrally located on the property so our power system will be centralized so yeah, now I just got to put in my boards, mark out something square, and go ahead and get it dug in and get it formed up. All right, so we got our grade stakes up. Me and Kristen leveled it out um, with the water level, so that's all good. I got a, quite a bit of dirt to move and it's kind of rooty, rough, tough digging, but I want to keep as much virgin soil to prevent uh, settlement later. So I got some digging to do 
and then I'm gonna throw my forms in, make sure my forms are level, and we'll be ready for concrete after that. Are you gonna end up breaking this shovel? Oh yeah, this shovel ain't gonna make it for sure. <laughs> Right, guys so my basic thing that I was trying to do was I had these two by tens left over I had enough of them from the deck build that I could use to form this and I said oh, I'll just save my money and use the lumber that I already have on my property the problem with this though is that I'm having to move a ton of dirt that I normally wouldn't have to move if these were two by four so it took me about two hours to dig this little footer with all the sticks and roots that are involved so I'm basically looking at two, four, six, about seven more hours of digging just to get the forms in, and then I still have to dig the footers. So unfortunately, I'm gonna go to the store, I'm gonna get my two by fours, I'm tapping out, I'm gonna form, and then the footers that I have to dig, I'm gonna use those to kind of grade out some low spots and uh, hand tamp that down because I think it'll be the more cost-effective solution. I should only have about seven more hours into this total job to get it formed and poured. I don't want to spend that amount of time just digging the ditches. I know it sucks, but I'm tapping out and I'm going, I'm taking the easy route. Plus we're worried that the cement truck might not even be able to come down here. Yeah, it might be wheelbarrow and all of this cement anyway, so. To be continued. We're gonna see, hopefully they can get back here. If it stays dry, they can get back, but if it rains, they're stuck. All right, so I'm out in the big city, out in the big world, trying to get some lumber. And one of the things I really love about the area that we live in in Puerto Rico, it's not a uh, tourist spot. So, like, I believe in the towns we live in, it's like 10% of the people living there um, speak English at home and stuff like that. So, every time I go out to do anything here, I really get an opportunity to work on and practice my Spanish, which has always been really important to me because living in south florida kind of embarrassed me when i moved there because everyone speaks like a bunch of different languages and i could only speak english so it was uh it was hard for me and i really realized you know how important it is to be able to talk to a bunch of different people from a bunch of different places so sometimes like in bigger cities it's scary when you go out you don't even want to practice your spanish because it's uh busy you know you feel like you're stumbling through your words and you're they're losing time and it's it seems inconvenient but out here it's a little bit slower pace so when i go to my ferreterias i get to work on all my broken spanish and humble myself and i'm gonna take you through a little bit of that today and you know my puerto ricans let me know if the spanish is getting better or if it's getting worse no Do, do pulgares, eh, cuatro pulgares. Dos por cuatro. Sí, dos por cuatro. Ah, dos por cuatro. ¿Y de cuánto de largo? Ah, ¿qué, ¿Qué precio para un pie es a ocho pies? Ocho regular, seis cincuenta. Tratado, seis noventa y cinco. Sin tratar. Sin tratar, seis cincuenta. Seis cincuenta. Okay. ¿Tú necesitas cuatro pies? ¿En tú tienes bloque? All right, so y'all let me know how I did. I rolled up in there and I said, look, y'all got some, in my mind, what I said was, hey, do you guys have wood? And then they said, yeah. And I said, two by four wood, eight feet. And they said, yeah. So I said, how much is the price? They told me it was like eight and change. I could pick up the main dollar, but when they start getting into the change, I, I cannot keep up with that because, you know, I'm still learning, cut me some slack. But yeah, that's one of the things I really, really enjoy about this is it's kind of like an immersion if you're closer to the capital or even in some of the bigger cities 
people will lose patience in my experience what I, what i've experienced is that sometimes there's a, a loss of patience and they just they'll jump into speaking english with you to save themselves times which i don't you know i fully completely understand you're at work you don't want to take time out of your day to be my spanish teacher <laughs> but it's one of the things that i really like and i have a blast learning about it here sadly though i only learn about the ferreteria stuff so like i don't if i were to go to like let's say you know the hospital and try to say my wife is sick or stomach's hurting that would be difficult for me and i'd really stumble through that i'm pretty good when it comes to getting screws and boards but uh other stuff i'm still learning but i'm i'm slowly i'm slowly getting into it you know i got friends online and pen pals that i argue with on instagram and i try to argue as much as i can only in spanish so you know i'm coming along i'm getting there another thing i love and i highly recommend if you ever come to Puerto Rico and you see the Coco Frio signs, boy, you got to pull over and get one. My nieces and nephews damn near drank me out of house and home with these bad boys because they they really ain't the cheapest, if I'm being honest with you. You know, they're, they're pretty expensive for a coconut. But the water is muy delicioso. It's basically God's Gatorade. You know, it's the Gatorade that comes naturally from the earth. It's great for you, and I can't resist it. Every time I leave the house, Chris and me get mad at me. But the guy has some palm trees that he said he would sell me. He said, I'll give you a nice tree for five bucks. He said, but you got to come dig it up. I ain't digging it up for you. So, you know, this is just life. This is the life of a gringo in Puerto Rico. I'm just out here trying to make it. You know, I just want to drink Coco Frios and go to the Ferreteria and have a great time. So I'm glad on this particular trip, I was able to take y'all along with me. Y'all could see a little bit of the life, the glory, and the struggles. All right, so I'm back now, and just as I was talking trash about how Coco Frio is as expensive and how they beat you over the barrel, I was driving down the road, and the dude ran out and flagged me down, and he gave me a freebie. He said, this one needs to go in the cooler, but you can cool it down. You can eat it later. He said, take that take that one on me. So I said, hell yeah. And that's what I love about the island. It's a pretty great place. People are always trying to hold you down and help you out. You know, it comes back to the old adage of life that I've always lived by. If you give love, you get love. So just remember that out there, people. Weather is not looking lovely. I'm thinking that's gonna be pretty tough there, but I don't care. I ain't made out of sugar. I'm working in the rain because I'm not losing another day for this. All right, boys and girls, I got the frame up. It was a uh, much simpler with the two by fours, a lot less moving dirt. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward there. So I got her all up, squared and leveled. She looked real good. I leveled her across the middle, perfect. Um, now I just got to dig out the footers, doing a slight bell footer on this. It's not going to be a huge, heavy structure, so I don't got to go crazy here. I'm trying to keep this uh, job at the minimum for the concrete that I'm going to have to purchase. So I think it's like a three yard minimum order. I think this is gonna end up being four and some change. So I'm gonna get the footers dug out now, get the steel in the ditches. Got a little bit of grade work to do. I have a few high and low spots, but I should be done here in another hour.
the majority of the work done for the forming. So now we'll just throw some steel in there. We have leftover steel from another project, so that should be easy. And then we just got the big truck. Hopefully can make it down here and pour our big, what do you call it? Foundation. Foundation. Solar. <laughs> yeah, it should be, it should be fine, but you never know. It's a little bit muddy right there. So he might not want to do it and I might have to run it in the one berry, but either way, that'll be fine. I got a lot of my materials coming next week. So I'm trying to order the block, trying to get it delivered. You know, it's a lot of, uh, back of the house stuff that you got to worry about when you're trying to build something new so it can happen in a relatively timely manner but i think it's going to go good i'll be back slinging block i'll be buried block layer again so uh you know i'm excited for that and mostly i just want this to get done fast normally i don't rush too much but i want to get it done so i can get my power taken yeah, care of because i'm it would be really sick. nice to have that power. i'm sick and tired of had to been living off a generator for a year and a half now just about so that's no fun I want to get that power going so that I can have a better life for my wife. Happy wife, happy life, you know. So I want her going better and everything being a lot easier for it so we can get started on the house. But we also don't ever use air conditioning as of late for the past few months. And it's pretty cool here. We hardly... Which is surprising. In the day, it's pretty hot. But in the shade, when after we moved and put our trailer under the pavilion over there in the woods, kind of, it's way more cooler. So. And, a, and a handsome good looking guy said that we should do that for a while and i remember that yeah that feller got a little bit of pushback but you know turns out he was right i couldn't believe it that's not what happened and it's a long story we're not gonna go into it today but yeah it's <laughs> it's you know we don't we don't use our ac and that's one of the things i'll tell people in life you know kill your ac if you're poor and you want to do better in life Get rid of that AC. That AC is what's holding you back. That <laughs> that marriage to endless comfort that you can find that. in America. Cut that tie for 10 years. You don't use your AC for seven or eight years and you'll make some money, I promise you. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a comment down below if you're new. Make sure you hit subscribe and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.